Welcome to episode 15 of the Acario podcast. Today, we're going to talk about personal development. And we're going to contrast two kinds of styles or schools of thought in this space. Because on the one hand, you have a, a softer approach. And if you look at the Acario podcast so far, we have been on that side several times. Like we've talked about things like how to, how to deal with and resolve your emotional issues, the importance of self-acceptance and how to deepen that and things like that. That's kind of on the softer side. And that's in contrast to the harder side, you know, the Dan Pena's, the David Goggins's, the maybe Jocko Willinks of the world, who are more likely to tell you to just toughen up and suck it up rather than, you know, here, do this writing exercise to develop your self-acceptance. And of course, I'm oversimplifying this a bit, but you get my point. And maybe you're wondering like, okay, if my goal is I want to be a badass, I want to get results, I want to be successful. And the question is, if, if you listen to the kind of approach that we have been taking, if you take my advice, are you going to become too soft? And this is an important thing to talk about. And I, I think especially for male people in our audience. So if you're a guy, you're more likely to have been exposed to that kind of toughen up, suck it up type of messaging. And the idea that in order to succeed, you just got to go harder more discipline, more work, less sleep, more self-sacrifice. That's what it takes. It's important to see both sides of this because, yes, you can be too weak and too soft and become a pushover. But on the other side, all this posturing and trying too hard to look strong and trying too hard to look tough is also not very constructive. So that's the topic that we're tackling in this episode. And I think you'll find that once we look past the surface, it gets more complex and more interesting. And there is a middle way that we propose here. And like I said, especially for male listeners, it's more likely that you haven't been exposed to this kind of thinking. On the other hand, for female listeners, and again, I'm oversimplifying this, but I think that in the female self-development space, you're more likely to be like too far on the soft side, on the feel-good side. And on the male side, you tend to be too far on the tough and up side. And we're trying to kind of bring a compromise here. So I think this will be useful for you. And of course, I'd be fascinated to hear your thoughts and feedback on this. You can find all the show notes for this episode at ikario.com forward slash 015 for episode 15. And you can also leave a comment there, or you can go to anchor.fm forward slash Ikario, and there's a, a message button there that you can click so that you can, you can do that on your computer or your phone or whatever, and you can record a voice message and send that in. So if you have questions or feedback, that is one way to get the discussion started. So that is Ikario.com forward slash 015. And with that, let's jump into the episode. Hello everyone, once again, welcome to the Acario podcast, where we help you break free from the human zoo, achieve your full potential, and become a force to be reckoned with. I remembered it this time, <laughs> okay. with your hosts, Ollie and um, Shane. So today I want to talk about something that actually follows on from our last conversation quite a bit, which is that I've become such a softy and isn't that a problem? So so let me... How are you still alive? The, yeah. So so the, the reason I want to have this conversation is because um, we've, been we've been talking about these various topics on the podcast and I can imagine that a younger version of me would look at this and be like, okay, well, there's some nice ideas here. You know, like last time we talked about self-acceptance and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's nice. But I want to be a badass. So I'm not going to listen to this shit, right? And I want to address that. I want to try to talk to that younger version of me or anyone who's basically like, no, you know, I'm a hard dude. I'm not going to do your self-acceptance and, and like gentle approach and all this shit, right? Hmm. I'm a tough dude. Interesting. Interesting topic, actually, that. Yeah. Yeah. So... And just as a and as an example, right, we can clearly see that there's that there's appeal in in kind of the other side. Because yeah, as anyone, if you've listened to some of these episodes, you can tell that I, I tend to have a, a pretty gentle approach to a lot of things. 
And, you know, on the other side of this would be, let's say, Dan Pena. <laughs> you know? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, mate, if I can think of two opposites in approach, <laughs> it'd be Dan Pena and you. It really would. Those, right. those would be the two yin-yangs, you know. Yeah. You've got the other end where Dan Pena's waving a literal gun around. Yeah. Bragging about how people kill themselves after a seminar. It's like, really? Is that a good review? Of your if you're going to shoot yourself, do it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is like, it's like, okay, these people have paid 30 grand. To hear yeah. Dan Payne, yeah, red faced, screaming at him, telling him to shoot himself properly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and you know, he's so he's a really strong representation of like, oh, I'm hard, everything's hard, and I'm hard, and and you know, and I'm an asshole and I'm proud of it and stuff. And so right away, obviously there's an appeal to that. There's an appeal to that. And one thing that I, I wanna kind of tease out in this conversation is why do we mistake that for strength? Because, for example, look, I remember seeing a clip where he's talking to Brian Rose, of course. <laughs> Let's not talk about Brian Rose. <laughs> no, we won't. That, that'll no. be a whole other no, hour, that will. No, no, this We're not going to go there. Too. We're okay, going to resist. But, so Dan Pena is talking. And he's saying, like, oh, you know, young people are complaining about, you know, the older generation who ripped the ass out of the world. And I was one of the guys who did it. I'm proud of that. It's like what I immediately see here is you wish you were. You wish you were. You wish you had done something that big that you could say, yeah, I wrecked the world, right? No, no, there, there are some people, yes, there's some people who are Dan Pena's age who have an extraordinary amount of wealth and have done some really shady shit to get that. Or you can say, yes, you personally are responsible for some massive environmental damage and you got billions of dollars out of it. Dan Pena wishes he were that guy for some reason. I don't know why, but clearly the reason he's saying that is because he's feeling inadequate. He feels like he should live up to that. He wants to be a billionaire, and he's not, from from what I can tell. Anyway, he calls himself the $50 billion man and finds some reason for why, because my students have made this much money. No, you haven't made a billion dollars, okay? And you feel really inadequate about that. You feel like you should have made this money. And you see that, yes, in the 80s or whatever, all these people were getting rich on Wall Street, and you weren't one of them. Mm -hmm. And you feel bad about that. But strangely enough, your expression of your inadequacy, of your feeling of not being enough, and of your fear that people find out that you don't have a billion dollars is mistaken for strength by some people. And that is a little bit mysterious to me. But that's one of the things we can get to. But the other thing is, okay, Dan Penny obviously is an extreme example. And I think most reasonable people can look at that and be like, mm, that's, I don't want to be that. Right, I don't want to be that, but they can still maybe hear me talk about self-acceptance and stuff like that and be like, well, no, I don't want to be a softy either. I want to be hard. So how do I, how do I, how do we square this? And should someone who wants to be a tough dude and successful and so on and so forth, should they pay attention to the kinds of ideas I have or should they go seek advice elsewhere? Hmm. And also, you know, I want to say that th this is something that has been a development for me because when I was younger, I was much more interested in hard skills. I was training martial arts and I was interested in, in combat skills in general and, you know, entrepreneurship early on, figure out how to make money and so on and so forth. And all this talk about, well, you know, the, the business is just a vehicle for creating positive change in the world and so on. It's, again, it's like, come on, man. You know, <laughs> like I can see that side of someone like, what are you talking about? Why, why aren't you... You know, why aren't you getting after it? Why aren't you hustling? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I want to talk about. Hmm. Um, yeah. So right off the bat, we're like, what are your thoughts on that? So my thoughts on what, well, straight away, what I thought just then that came up was my definition of, of strength. Because you mentioned that why is it that sort of softness is not associated with strength in a way? And... A couple of things came up. One of them was my definition of sort of courage, mm. which as I continue to, with every day that sort of passes, my definitions of courage and strength and resilience and stuff, they have changed a lot. Now I recognize that courage seems to be, for me, the willingness or ability or capacity to... Um, to sort of face the truth, however scary it may be, to, to the truth of your present experience, the feelings you're experiencing to their, to their fullest degree. 
like the fear, the the shame, all this other stuff. Um, whereas at one point I thought that I attributed strength or courage to just to just radical action, and an action, yes, good. Uh, I value that too, and that's one of the things that I've learned from 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 you. Um, but also, it's the it's the it's the willingness to to accept what is truly there. Mm. So if we use Dan Pena's sort of example, um, Dan Pena, from what I can tell, and I'm not a professional psychologist or anything, but there is, he seems to be a man who's just driven by this deep, deep, deep inadequacy, which causes him to overcompensate to such a ridiculous degree. And for me, that's, that's not something I aspire to, to be. Mm. because I don't see that as courage. I don't see that as strength. I see that as, as, as a form of weakness. It's like, what would, be, what would be a complete change in the story? We one day, Dan, Dan Pena actually accepts, guys, I just feel pretty shit. I need help. I've mm. not made as much money as I thought. My father told me I should be a billionaire. I've tried my hardest my whole life. I'm just done. I'm done fighting I'm, and I'm... I'm sorry if I've hurt anyone along the way, but I want to. I want to be better. You know, I'm in my. I'm in the the final sort of stages of existence, and I don't want to leave with this aggression. Uh, can you help me? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? I'm impressed that? with that. Thing. That'd be like, whoa! Yeah, straight away that'd be courage, strength, and resilience embodied. Mm-hmm. If a person could leave all of that baggage behind and just say that, even how, however imperfect the effort would be. The willingness to face what's true. Mm-hmm. Which I agree with you, but like before we start talking like a bunch of hippies again, let's think about the problem is, well, let's talk about like utility and let's talk about alpha males. Because so with <laughs> because this is a whole other thing which I find fascinating. It seems to be a whole other niche on YouTube, for example, of like alpha male stuff. You know, how to be an alpha male. And this is also pretty interesting. Um, we're gonna, on the YouTube version of this, maybe also on the audio version, let's, let's insert a clip of like the power moves guy. There's, there's, it's just hilarious. This guy who like teaches you power moves. Is that his website? Uh, no, no, I, I, I don't know what, what he's called, but it's just a specific video I have in mind that we're gonna insert here. Sure. Which is, and it's just hilarious. Because, okay, you can see this, there's, there's no way this guy isn't like overcompensating and, and putting it on. And also, like, in the real world, he's he's talking about this as like, oh, do these things and people will be so impressed and that makes you an alpha and stuff like that. Where in the real world, it's just like, no, you'll be ridiculous. Like, if you do this, I guess this thing about how to shake someone's hand. Dude, if you shake someone's hand like that, they're just going to be like, oh, that's weird. This that's... guy, apparently this guy doesn't know how to shake a hand. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They won't think, oh, damn. Yeah. Who's that guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just gonna be. It's also not gonna be super dramatic. It's just gonna be mildly awkward. You know, you shake someone's hand. They're doing something weird. You're like, okay, that's weird. <laughs> you see, when you go for a handshake, you want to keep your index finger pointed out so they can't fully grasp your hand. Now, if you want to do a real kill shot, this is like, this is like the ultimate power move. Like, if you don't think this is enough, go more. I want you to go in for the same handshake and then with your other hand put it on his shoulder and just bring him in slightly. This right here, you just turned this man into your beta. You're basically saying, come here, boy. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Okay. So, but nobody's gonna be like, oh, wow, this guy. <laughs> so, and it, it's weird, right? It's weird that this is that this is a thing. But of course, the reason, the, the reason this is, this has appeal and the reason people seek this out is really it comes down to utility. Like you want to do this in order to achieve something or in order to get something. And so you imagine again, like this is, I want to show up like this as an alpha male in the expensive suit and do the special handshake and make sure that nobody ever interrupts me, but I interrupt them and all kinds of other stuff, right? That I need to do to be an alpha male. Why do I want to do that? Well, because I want to be respected. I want to be seen as a leader. I want to have a good career, make more money and so on and so forth. I want some form of like achievement and safety really. And Mm. then the question is because, okay, of course we can sit here and and go, oh, the real courage is to show vulnerability and so on. Yeah, but what if the alpha males walk all over us and make more money than us and and get all the hot bitches and we don't? 
And I think that's the problem. I think that's the problem from the perspective of the person who's who says, I want to be a hard dude and I want to accomplish cool shit. That's why I don't want to listen to the softy because the softy isn't getting the shit that I want in life. So that's that comes down to like the incentives again, isn't it? It's like the incentive is to become like that because I'm afraid that if I if I take any other route, then all the alpha male people are going to just take everything mm -hmm. that I want. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that Would you say that's a barrier? I think that's, well, yeah, I think that there, there must be something like that behind it. Nobody wants to be a clown like that. And, and have to put on a show and all this crap. Like, especially if you think about suits, right? Suits are like incredibly uncomfortable and, and very expensive and all this kind of stuff. Like, well, who would want to wear this if they don't feel like they're getting something else out of it? So I think there must be something like that behind it. But also I think that's the concern. That's why you don't want to listen to the softy because you don't want to turn into a softy because you're afraid that that will ultimately diminish your life quality. I think this is why a lot of people who are involved in that sort of rah-rah hustle culture will look at people like uh, Eckhart Tolle or other people who, like that and it's like who have a very soft sort of approach talk about presence and mm -hmm. so it's like Ugh. they have like literally I've, I know people who have a a, a repulsive response to that and it's yeah, like yeah. Ugh. I don't want to be like that <laughs> it's like deep down because you feel like mm -hmm. you, you're not going to get all the stuff that you want through that approach mm -hmm. And so I think there is, I think there are two things here that we can talk about. One of one of them is cultural, kind of the bigger picture, and another is personal. So, because on on the personal side, let's start with that. On the personal side, what I personally believe in is basically gentle strength. Okay, I also I also don't want to be a softy. I also think, and I also see that problem. I see the problem on both sides. On the one hand, you know, you can you can go too far in either direction, where you can be all about performance and achievement and success and status and so on. And clearly, that's a recipe for misery. Like I don't have to explain that. I think I think everybody can see how pursuing that all the way leads to misery. Yeah. But on the other hand, there is also the problem of going all the way towards like hippie and holding hands and kumbaya and so on and love and peace, but then being completely like apathetic and, and being someone who doesn't have any power in the world, doesn't, have to, doesn't make anything happen. And again, I think most of us probably know some people like that, um, you know, who, who always have nice things to say about how we're all one and so on, but they also always need to borrow your money. <laughs> need to borrow your money or they're always talking about this massage business they're building when they're, just, they're actually not charging still. They're just take, like yeah. massaging friends and stuff. It's just like, it's, yeah. It's yeah. like this ineffectiveness, this inability yeah. to, to create real powerful mm -hmm. changes and self-direct in such a powerful way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're lovely to spend time with. Yeah, absolutely. But I also don't want to be like that. Mm. So, and to me, the, the resolution of this is gentle strength. And I think that real strength only counts when you can, or it only matters when you also have the choice of being gentle, when you don't have to constantly be posturing. And in fact, I think that posturing either way is no good. So posturing, when you're, in, you're constantly, you know, <laughs> puffing yourself up, and constantly you have to be loud and you have to take up a lot of space and have to do all the alpha male stuff. It's like, no, you're just posturing. You're just, you're also, I, th I feel people often reach for some kind of uh, substitute, you know, substitute masculinity. It's like, I'm, you know, I'm, I feel secure in my masculinity because I drink beer, I eat steak and I'm a football fan. But that's a substitute for the, the real masculine quality is that that's not those things. There's something else that you're that you're trying to hint at or replace with these things. Because really, I mean, how impressive is it that you drink beer and are a fan of football? You know, it's not it's not a, an amazing quality to be proud of. Yeah. So it's like substitute strength, substitute masculinity, and that's no good. That's fake, right? You're you're like the, you're the alpha male balloon basically, and you just pop as soon as <laughs> as soon as someone comes with a little prick, you know. <laughs> yeah and, yeah but on the other side it's also no good to do to to do like the the other the other thing is also empty like all the talk about about the soft approach and about love and acceptance and so on and so forth but you're also it's just a balloon and as soon as a little resistance comes poof nothing there 
Mm -hmm. Both of these are pointless. I want neither of these. And real strength is when you have the strength and you have the capability, but you also have control. So you're not just a, you know, an uncontrolled ball of rage and fury at all times, which is, yes, that's a form of kind of strength. It's like a lot of energy is coming off of that, you know, but that's, that's not real strength. Real strength is when you can also be gentle with it. And as a very practical example of this, I've never been in a real street fight, but I've been in several situations where someone wanted to start a fight with me. And they were doing all the kind of stuff that, you know, that I think certainly every male listener is going to be familiar with. You getting know. up in your grill. Exactly. <laughs> getting up in your grill, talking <laughs> shit, all this kind of stuff. And this, for me, this never turned into an actual fight. And I think one of the reasons is because, well, there's two things that happen in this case. One, I, not for a moment, do I believe that this person is dangerous. Not for a moment do I mistake this display for strength. It's like I realize that someone who does this, someone who does this kind of behavior and, and you know comes up in my face like this and is also, I mean, w whatever it was that triggered them in the first place, they're so thin-skinned, right? I never mistake that for strength. I never go, ooh, this, is, this could be dangerous. No. And secondly, if they actually started the fight. Like, I'm not going to escalate that provocation, right? But if they actually did, if they actually did start throwing fists, I know that I could win that fight. I absolutely could win that fight. And again, look, it may sound like I'm boasting, but the bar is bloody low. Most people are incredibly bad at fighting, okay? <laughs> they're super confident <laughs> when they're drunk. Yeah, yeah. But their abilities diminish. Yeah. <laughs> their, their abilities are mostly terrible anyway, but yeah. they, they diminish when they're drunk. And then the confidence goes up. It's like, Jesus, yeah. you know? So I'm, I'm not saying this, I'm, I'm not saying here that, oh, it's because I'm such a tough dude or whatever. No, I just know how incredibly bad most people are at fighting. And I know that I can win that fight. So we're basically, the reason why, the real reason why Shane wanted to bring this up as a topic was to spend a good 30, 40 minutes talking so, about how hard he was. Like, yeah. Ooh, like, I'm so tough. <laughs> I'm hard as nail as I am. So let's talk about that for 40 minutes. Ollie, yeah. what's your thoughts on how yeah, hard I am? Yeah, tell me, tell me more. <laughs> tell me about what you think about this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, you know what I mean? So, and I think to me, that is, that there's just two things in there that are important to me. It's like, one, I don't mistake that for strength. I don't mistake the posturing. I don't mistake the barking for biting or for the ability to bite, right? I don't mistake the posturing for strength. And I'm basically displaying, this is a very crude example of gentle strength, which is that I could fuck you up, but I'm not going to unless you actually start something. And I'm also not going to escalate this. I don't have to be seen as the guy dominating this situation. I don't have to be seen as, you know, resisting or, or pushing back or anything like that. You can come up in my face and do your thing and then, you know, it'll fizzle out and then you leave. And that's completely fine, you know. And you throw some, you know, insults at me or whatever. That's fine. That's fine. I don't have to, I don't have to do anything here, right? But I do have the strength to fuck you up if it comes to that. And that's a very crude example of gentle strength. Hmm. So, Yeah. Okay, so that, that, that makes sense. It's like this um, this middle way again, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but something I just wanted to clarify was, I guess, the, um, the, the, the main sort of thesis, the main, the main sort of subject we're talking about here. And I'm trying to sum this up really quickly so I can get a grasp on it. So it's that this belief that being hard and rigid equals strength yeah. and being soft and fluid is weakness. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about here is how this is not the case. And the way that the reason why this is not the case is that there is an option of the sort of middle way between these two polar opposites, mm -hmm. um, and that being too far on either spectrum, you get the you get the ineffective hippie on the one hand, yeah, and you get crazy ass Dan Pena on the other, <laughs> and the thing in the middle is a, is a gentle strength. And you're saying this comes from a sense of um, it sounds like a sense of self, like real real self confidence in that moment because you're saying that this guy could be. Um, flapping his gums and getting in your grill and all the other all the other sayings. <laughs> um, I think they're from they're from the UK. Them sayings. Uh, and but in the moment you're confident in your in your abilities. Yeah. 
And you also do not have the burden of, of feeling like you have to prove yourself to everybody. Yeah. Because I'm trying to I'm trying to deconstruct, I guess, what, and I'm sure you're going to get to this too, what um, gentle strength really means and how widely applicable that is and how a person can cultivate that. Yeah. So an important aspect of gentle strength is actual strength. <laughs> and and this is this is where we move away from the from the hippie balloon example, right? Um, I strongly believe in cultivating things that make you more powerful, and this is one of the reasons why we say you know we have a force to be reckoned with in in the tagline for this podcast in the poorly executed <laughs> in the often poorly executed tagline we'll get there <laughs> we'll get there i swear to god we've got to by episode 100 if we're still yeah. fanning around with that intro and outro hold us accountable to yeah. that because come yeah. on <laughs> anyway so that's one of the reasons that's in there is because and we also talked about this in, in an earlier episode about it is about raising your power level it is about becoming more capable and more powerful as a human being and that does mean that you can potentially do more damage and you can potentially do more good and i believe in the virtue of developing strength and that includes for example developing the ability to fight so developing combat skills and developing survival skills and developing negotiation skills and thinking skills and persuasion skills and so on and so forth. I, I'm a huge believer in developing these strengths as a, as a very um, practical way to raise your power level, to make yourself more capable in the world. And in a way, I guess what I could say is I believe in doing that instead of posturing. Do that instead of pretending like you're hard, instead of pretending like you're dangerous. Do the work to become dangerous. Mm, instead of instead of um, taking all the Instagram photos, you know, learn to actually be like learn real entrepreneurial skills yeah. and stuff like that. So for me, it is literally zero percent of my time and effort goes into my appearance. I spend zero percent of my time and effort trying to appear strong or capable or powerful or dangerous or anything like that. And I spend all of my time actually cultivating those skills. I don't know if you guys have noticed yet, but Shane has worn the same T-shirt, I think, for every single episode up to this point. Uh, and this is something on the team we kind of we've kind of noticed. It's just like, yeah, just, she wears the same T-shirt all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like, and that's because you don't actually you don't care about that stuff. Yeah, I don't I don't care about making. Yeah, that's, when fashion is just one of those things. Like, I understand the. Basically, I understand how fashion works and I understand the, the value of, of being able to dress up and so on. And you signal that you know how to play the game and all this kind of stuff, which is all fine. But for me, the extent to which I'm going to invest in that is I'm going to find a T-shirt that fits me well and I'm going to get 20 of those. I'm always going to wear the same T-shirt because I'm not I'm not going to be standing there going, oh, do I look in, good in this? Should I wear this or that? It's like, no, no. Hmm. So that's, that's the fashion example. Yeah. And I want to say, and I, I mean, at the risk of... I don't know, at the risk of a podcast being extremely boring because I agree with you, <laughs> but I I would say that I, I really do because, I mean, there was a time in my life when I was a, a real hippie. Like, I was a, I was a full-on hippie. Uh, I'm not on Facebook anymore, but there was, like, uh, there was some photos of me being full Ollie hippie mode. Mm. But at the same time, I was fighting. I was, I was, like, training MMA, and I was lifting weights in the gym and everything, and it was a real shock to, to my friends at the time when I'd... I fought in MMA and the, the video came out on YouTube and all my friends watched it and they're like, holy shit. Well, he's like the nicest guy ever. He's like the most peace-loving dude. Um, but he just he just fucked someone up on video here. Mm. <laughs> and it's just this really, it's, it's, it's something that I always, I felt like my capacity and confidence in my own ability to, to fight and to handle myself allowed me to be truly kind in a way, mm. because I didn't have the fear. Yeah, I didn't have the desire to posture. Because with the, it's like with this sense of real confidence comes, I don't know, you just, it's like you don't, okay, with real confidence, fear reduces. Like you're not as afraid. Mm. It's like if I was afraid, then I would have felt like I didn't want to be too kind or whatever else because I don't want people taking advantage or anything else. Yeah. But if I really do know that I'm, I'm safe in my own abilities here, 
it allows me to choose kindness and to actually feel um, content to be that way. Because as I say, in that moment, it's it, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I think that I think that makes it pretty clear about how like the difference between doing the real thing and just pretending to do the real thing and and posturing because you feel that lack. And you know, I think there's there's one element is to say that you you don't do the posturing because you can be you can, even if you feel the lack if you say oh I don't, I'm not very I'm not formidable I'm not physically formidable for example and that makes me feel afraid then you can you can also overcome that or one step to overcome it is be okay with that say that's fine this is who I am and not feel the need to compensate hmm. but then the and the other thing is to say I'm going to develop this strength I'm going to become formidable. But then another part of this is, this is what I was hinting at before with like the cultural aspect of this. Because again, someone can say, okay, that's fine. So you develop these skills and you're outwardly gentle, let's say, you're not posturing. But again, what if the posturing alpha males, then still, you know, they get voted president of the board or whatever because of their posturing. It's like, what if they still, they're going to succeed where you don't because of their outwardly alpha male behavior. Hmm. What about that? And I do think we have a cultural problem there in the sense that too often posturing is mistaken for strength and too many people will let someone who's just doing the posturing basically walk all over them. And we'll, we'll let people get away with this kind of strange um, display of weakness mm -hmm. disguised as strength to the degree where even you know, someone can, in fact, rise up the ranks fueled by this this weird display of weakness, which is that's what it is. You know, this kind of aggressive posturing stuff, it's a display of their weakness. And somehow, but then that can still drive someone's success to some degree. Yeah. Now, I mean, one of the things there is that I think it would be good if we had more of a conversation about this culturally and if people were more attuned to the difference between real strength and posturing. But another thing is, if we think about what are, if we think about like the, let's say typical, like aggressive, like alpha masculine, strong traits, that what are these things that are, let's be honest, that, that can be desirable and can get results, right? What, what are these things? I made a, I made a quick list here. Oh, cool. Things, things like being bold, being assertive, even being dominant, getting things done, being confident, being someone who isn't a pushover, being someone who doesn't let other people walk all over them, being a decision maker, being someone you can rely on to make a decision even in a difficult spot, uh, being someone who's potentially dangerous even. Now, let's be honest, even though it's depending on, you know, in some circles, this would be very, um, you're, you're not allowed to admit this, but these are traits that can make someone attractive. Yeah, where people will want to rally around that kind of strong man because even if someone is dangerous in a volatile way it can still send it can still give people a sense of security if you feel like well yes this person is dangerous but they're on my side so their dangerousness is going to protect me from other dangers in the world and so what about that? Again, if, if we're just being the hippies who are constantly, you know, sitting in a meditation pose with a slight smile on our faces, then that guy is going to walk all over us and do better than us. And I think here's the thing with, with all these things. I think it is true that like, being bold and assertive and so on and so forth, those are great qualities. But the one thing to realize about that is that you can be all these things without being aggressive. And you can be all these things without it being emotionally charged and without there being any element of lashing out. And in fact, I think that often the like some of the greatest leaders and coaches are a lot like that. So in uh, one of the Jim Collins books, which I think is good to great, is the one where he writes about this, where they analyzed companies that managed a, um, a real turnaround, you know, that had been doing poorly and then started doing well and then did well for a long time. Hmm. And they tried to figure out what happened here. And one of the things they found is that was what they call level five leadership, where they said that 
this is one of the things that was very different than what they expected going in. What they expected going in is that what must happen when a company has a turnaround like that is that a new leader steps in, you know, a new CEO steps in. And that CEO is, you know, the, the strong alpha, runs a tight ship, tells people what to do, domineering kind of maybe eccentric, um, eccentric genius type CEO. Hmm. And what they found is basically the opposite of that. That it's true that usually there is a change of CEO before the turnaround, but the, the new CEO is usually kind of a quiet, empathetic, does more listening than talking kind of person. And, but that doesn't mean, this is important, that doesn't mean that they're not assertive. That doesn't mean that they don't make decisions. That doesn't mean that they can't get stuff done. It is, they have all these qualities but they have none of the volatile, like emotional, random lashing out, you know, don't talk to the boss before he ha he's had his second coffee kind of stuff. So there's someone who can sit there and listen and will very carefully listen to everyone's concerns and will think about it quietly and will make a decision and then announce this is what we're doing. And then if someone goes, oh, well, we can't this and that, then they will explain, no, here's why, this is what we're doing. And if someone pushes back hard, eventually it'll be like, look, this is not working out, you're fired. Still, there's no emotion here, right? <laughs> it's just, this is assertiveness. This is getting shit done. This is being a strong leader. It is just without this volatility involved. So the point is that you can have all the, the traits that make a person attractive uh, and traits that- And effective. And effective that might, might, that might help them achieve like professional success mm -hmm. but you don't the, you can, the, the posturing and the aggression and the volatility is completely unnecessary yeah or one way to put it is like you can be an alpha male without being an asshole and without having to yeah without having to have the alpha maleness constantly kind of sparking off of you you know yes but uh, we've, we've talked about this in the how to get your shit together series where we were talking about like the role of being able to choose yeah, and how a lot of people may need to develop their, uh, their inner capacity to be an asshole. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. if they, if they, t if they lean far too, um, you know, too, too far towards the, the part of the spectrum where they're just essentially ineffective. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, well you might need to spend a bit of time at the other, under, other end of the spectrum just That's to, true, yeah. If you don't have a choice, yeah, exactly. If yeah. you don't have a choice, so if you're, and and that would be the the problem of being like a doormat, right? Of having walk, people walk all over you because you never you never resist in any way. So yes, it's it's ideally, I think you should have the choice. And again, that's then gentle strength where you can be like, yes, I can, I can shout at you and intimidate you, but I don't need to because I have loads of other tools as well. Yeah, but I mean, to develop that doesn't even need to be uh, over the top. Uh, just off the top of my head, there's a couple of things that I did. Uh, I still I still do occasionally. What I'll do is, say for instance, if I'm in line getting coffee or something, I'll um I'll just and it's my turn to order. I'll just stand there for way longer than than I should. I'm gonna say I'm I'm being an asshole right now. I am. Mm. I don't need to stand here. I kind of I think I kind of know what I'm having already. But I'm just I'm letting the tension build. Mm. I'm just letting myself piss a few people off. Just a bit, not not in a ways that's going to ruin their day, yeah. not in ways that's going to cause any long lasting effects or anything. It's really not going to cause any harm. It's just going to cause temporary discomfort, and I'm going to be painted as the asshole for a little bit. And it's like I feel extremely uncomfortable doing that, but that's because I'm not used to being an asshole in public to people. But I'm like, yeah, I'm not being specifically an asshole to anyone in particular. Mm. I'm just being an inconvenience to everyone in the queue. Uh, so I just I, pray, I literally do that sometimes. It's like, hmm. Oh, this feels horrible. When I can't handle the tension anymore, I'm like, okay, cool. I'll have a, uh, yeah, I'll have a cappuccino. Um, and um, yeah, and the the other thing is just rather than um, say say if I'm a messaging back, to, um, you know, talking talk to a friend or something about something that might be bothering me, I will just purposefully not self edit anything. Hmm. Like usually, I'm like, how can I word this? How can I how can I do this so it's like tactful? And most of the time, I do that because it's good to do. That's mm. healthy. But occasionally it'll be like, I'm just going to send this text raw, raw, unedited. That's how I feel. Not doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, that's me. That's me practicing, developing my inner capacity to be an asshole. 
Mm. Um, but I just I just thought I'd mention that if that uh, yeah, and I, I think that's good because what you're 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 practicing something that stretches your emotional capacity, and this is exactly one of those things. You're doing the real thing in the real world. You're doing the real work instead of pretending, right? You're doing the real work instead of instead of um, displaying behavior to try and cover up for things that you feel like you're you lack or that you or skills that you don't have. Yeah, yeah. Because for the longest time, it's like I'd take this free loving hippie approach and i would let people walk all over me but yeah. i'd have this this ready-made justification for it which was a hippie based mm -hmm. excuse really mm -hmm. um yeah. so as a as a final note at least a final note from from my side from you know my thinking on this topic on this is again if we think about utility and effectiveness what i would for anyone who's concerned about this, because really at the core, this is, I think, the problem is you're like, I want to be effective and I don't want to take on beliefs and ideas that are going to make me less effective. And which the flip side of that is that you might be holding on to ideas and beliefs that are actually less than ideal for you. So the things that are working for you right now that seem to be working for you right now, you're holding on to them and you're afraid that if you let go and try something else, you'll be less effective, you'll be, you'll be left behind. And this is also something we talked about in the last episode about self-acceptance. People are afraid of self-acceptance because they think it's going to make me less effective and less driven. And so, yeah, for anyone who hasn't listened to that, I recommend listening to that. And here I think it's the same thing right, where you think, okay, again, the, the end goal is I want to be effective, I want to be capable and powerful in the world, and I'm afraid of taking on softy beliefs and becoming a doormat or becoming ineffective. And here, it's also what I what I would say is that at the very least, if you follow this kind of idea that we've laid out here, it can make you more efficient. It can make you more efficient because you're freeing up more of your time and your energy on doing the actual thing, you know, the, the, the real thing that gets the result instead of being worried about and and spending energy on the pretending and the compensating. Hmm. So, yeah, it's because it, because it does take the truth is the the posturing does take time and energy, and I think it takes considerable time and energy, like especially mental energy, to to always feel like I always have to be projecting. It's almost like I have to project this force field around me with certain behaviors and certain appearances and so on, because I'm always warding off people. From, from coming close enough to see what's really going on. There you go. And that's yeah. costing you a lot of energy. That's costing you a lot of your time and energy. And if instead of doing this, like if you if you free up all this time and energy, you have so much more time and energy to actually develop your skills and your strength. So that is how I would essentially sell this to you. It's like, let go of the posturing, let go of the pretending and start turning all that time and energy into solving the underlying issues and actually building capacity and strength. Yeah, and and the word that came up was tension. And I think we're gonna mention this as a as a bit of insider language, I guess, yeah. in podcasts going forward, because the posturing raises your tension mm -hmm. um, and that can reduce your performance, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and that's again, we'll also link again to the high performance, low tension, a blog post and, and video that explores this in greater detail because I think this is one of the big mistakes people make is they think that high tension leads to high performance and if you're under high tension and the performance isn't good enough then more tension more pressure is the, is the solution and no it's not it's really not so yeah that's that's the uh, yeah any other thoughts about becoming a softie uh, I think, I mean, as far as I can tell, I think you've, uh, I think you've covered it. Um, so we've basically covered the, the, the what you, what we perceive to be the, the problem with this, or the assumptions people make. Mm -hmm. We've also covered why a person would resist, um, resist anything that might even vaguely resemble softness, mm -hmm. um, because they fear. And correct me if I'm wrong, but they, they fear that alpha, the alpha male posturing people will come just steamrolling in. 
um, they'll win. They'll the alphas. The alphas win. The alphas will win. Mm-hmm. And the uh, the betas or omegas or whatever the <laughs> whatever fucking name it is <laughs> will, will lose. Um, so then they resist that. So then they feel like they have to posture as well. Mm-hmm. And we've covered the the reason why posturing is actually making you far less effective. Yeah. And why that's yeah why that's actually shooting yourself in the foot. And it's worth examining, you know. I think that's still something we've come back to several times on the podcast, but it's it's worth if what you're really after is effectiveness and high performance, then you should examine all the elements of how you're trying to achieve that. And not simply assume that this behavior that I'm currently doing is the best way to get there, but really examine, is this the best way? Is this actually helping? Is the stuff I'm doing actually leading to the result I want? Because I think we can often fool ourselves into, yeah, into a strange situation where we, and, you know, one of the examples I mentioned was this this kind of weird um, surrogate masculinity, right? Where you've kind of never questioned that real men drink beer and are football fans, and that's so that's what I do. But if you really examine that, hold on, is that what I believe about masculinity? Is that what's useful and important about masculinity? If you actually look at that, if you actually examine it, if if you truly care about the the outcome that you that you say you care about and you take a close look at these beliefs and these behaviors you'll find that some of them are not optimal yeah i mean if, if masculinity is just eating steak and drinking beer and watching football it's like sure it's a, it's a pretty low bar yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, a pretty, it's a pretty low bar but that just sounds like it's based on the um arbitrary outward appearances rather than the underlying principles and characteristics exactly you yeah know, so so yeah uh, but I think that's it, mate. All right. I think, we've, I think we've nailed it. Good stuff. That's all. So subscribe to the channels and subscribe to the podcast and buy our things. And buy, yeah, buy all of our things. And uh, that's it. I, was, I thought I was going to add something to that, but I didn't. Again, we have yet another impeccable outro for you guys <laughs> so I, good i hope you've enjoyed we it we are the, we are literally the best at doing outros um, i i'm i bet everybody keeps listening because just the high quality of the outro is just like that's when we really ramp it up you know the end of the podcast is like that's where we are at our best the thing is i'm i'm really concerned shane because i think at some point our outros and intros will maybe by episode 1012 mm. will be actually vaguely good <laughs> and and our audience of maybe like 25 people will be like oh my god no don't we, we really enjoyed seeing you guys just screw it up just, on the intros just and outros fail all the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 we'll just be suffering well, from perfection at that point <laughs> you know? just this perfection yeah. it's just yeah. such a burden it's true i mean it is it is it's important that you know we don't want obviously we want success for this podcast but not too much not too much Please. we don't want to be overwhelmed with yeah. success don't so. tell too many of your friends yeah. about this yeah. just okay. like just like a few hundred just, of them at just, a time. just a few hundred yeah just you gotta just take us into account right we're just we're, we're only two people yeah. we're, we're only we're only a small team here yeah <laughs> all right see you next time until next time guys take care